the greetings in the name of God our Father, the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name. Now I know that we so easily confess that Jesus is Lord and his name is above every name, but how do we make that real for us in our day to day lives? Well, that is what I want to do tonight with the Spirit's help, to look again at Luke chapter 11 verses 1 to 4. So if, if you'd like to turn with me to Luke chapter 11 and I'll be reading verses 1 to 4. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place and when he finished one of his disciples said to him, Lord teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. Father, hallowed be your name. Last time we looked at that word hallowed to make other, just the way that light is other than darkness and the sun is other than moon because the moon can only reflect, reflect light shone on it and therefore the sun is other than the moon. But then the, the question then arises, what should be hallowed? Well it's there in our text if you look at verse 2, hallowed be your name. We are called to make his name other, separate from any other name, any other person, every, any other object. But again, what does it mean, your name? Well, names in the Bible are important. If you turn back to Genesis, uh, why is Adam called Adam? Well, Adam, the roots behind Adam, uh, in the Hebrew it means ruddy or to be red in the face or show blood and that shows that he's an individual that, that showing off blood is saying he's a person the first person then later on Adam calls his wife's name Eve why? because Genesis 3 verse 20 tells it, says this now the man called his, wife name, his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. All human life can, came from this one pair, Adam and Eve. And to make sure that the rest of humanity understood where we came from, Adam called his wife's name Eve, because all humanity came through her. So can you see why names in the Bible are important? So what is God's name? Well, throughout the scriptures, there are many names uh, of God, but I want to just pick one, uh, and my point is this, as we look at this name of God, we need to see how his name intersects with our lives, and so it's, it's just not a concept, it's just not a name, but it meets our need. That is how we are to hallow his name, because as we prove that his name is true in this area. We are honouring him. We're showing his name is above every name. He says who he is. And so we prove him to be true. And so we, um, and as we prove him to be true, and we've proved that for ourselves, his name becomes more dear to us and more precious to us personally. So if you turn with me to Proverbs chapter 18, and verse 10, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10, and we will look at um, another name of God. Proverbs 18 verse 10. And it says these words. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. So here we are, the scriptures tell us one aspect of what God's name is, a strong tower. Well, what is the purpose of a strong tower? Well, the text tells us the righteous run into that strong tower and is safe. The whole point is that you're going to be safe from the enemy. That is the purpose of the strong tower. We all see the, 
the great castles in England and they were built. Why? To keep out the enemy and to protect those inside so that they are safe from the enemy. Well, uh, uh, Psalm 61 shows us how that this intersects with a person's life. How this um, name of God, that he is a strong tower, intersects with an individual's life. So I want to read Psalm 61 to you and listen for that word strong tower and how it intersected with David's life. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you. When my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May be he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. So there in verse 3, David confesses, For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. David knows personally this tower of strength. How? Because he, he, he had an enemy. It was against the enemy that he ran into the strong tower. Uh, go back to verse 2, it says, from the end of the earth I call to you. When he was faint, he, he was trembling, his knees were knocking, he was in great distress. And so he cries out in verse 1, hear my cry, I'm calling out to you. I'm in this desperate situation, the enemy is assailing me. Been, it might have been that he was being pursued by Saul on one of those occasions. And he, was, he knew Saul was out to kill him. And so he was in great fear um, emotionally. But he didn't let that fear cripple him. No, he cried out to God, oh God help me. And then David testified time after time that God was that strong tower, that place of refuge, a tower of strength. And he felt protected from his enemy. So can you see how the intersection occurs between your name, God's name, the name is the Lord, of, is a strong tower, and we, we're the ones that need in refuge. We have an enemy pursuing us and we feel fear and, and we need protection from that enemy. I don't know what particularly your fears are, but we all have fears. But the Lord, uh, uh, the, what the Lord is saying to us is look at David's testimony. You don't have to fear. You, like David, can run into the strong tower, the place of refuge, so that you feel safe and protected. And though you might have that real felt fear of fear, you can ha know a place of safety, a place where you feel protected against the hardest of enemies. So how do we get to where David got to? When the fears come in and cripple us, and, and we, and, and, and we often maybe not have that experience that God, that David might have testified to, that he had this place of refuge, a shelter from his fears. So, how do we experience this? Well, that Proverbs eighteen verse ten says this: the righteous run into the strong tower. That is the point of the strong tower. The point is not to look, be outside the strong tower and the fortress and say, well, look at this great tower. You know, the way that we are outside the castles looking at the impenetrable walls. No, we're meant to be running into the castle, running into that strong tower and not admire it from the outside. In the same way, a soldier, he doesn't have his shield next to him and says, look at this great shield and how it's going to protect me against the enemy. No, he lifts up the shield and stands behind the shield so that arrows are heading, that the arrows that are heading for him are not going to hit him. 
The whole point of the, the shield is to protect the shot soldier, to take their arrows for him. So as we know that physically, um, about the shield and the strong tower, how do we run spiritually into that strong tower, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we are safe? Firstly, look back to, again, Psalm um, 61. And look what David does. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. We pray. That's the first thing we're called to do. When you feel the fear, pray. And, um, and you cry out to God. Let, it, that, let that fear be the trigger that says, uh, my knees are knocking. I feel faint. I feel this fear. But I'm running into the strong tower of the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm crying out to him. Be my tower of strength now. I need a place of refuge. Be good to your word. Save me, O mighty Saviour, from this fear. Take God at his word. Plead his promises back to him until he delivers you from the enemy. That is exactly what Paul means in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. He says this, In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. What is the object of our faith? It's the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? And when you hide behind him, you're taking him at his word. You're saying, you're my strong tower. You're my shield. Lord Jesus, you are the only one that can protect me. Help. Secondly, worship God in song. Look at the title of this, this uh, psalm, To the Choir Master. Well, if it's for the choir master, then you, it's meant to sing it. And this psalm is meant to be sung. And it's saying, Lord, you're the strong tower. And that is what singing do, does. Singing is, is not just singing. Singing is worship to God. It's confessing Jesus you're the strong tower. It's lifting your, it's telling your soul again the gospel. It's drilling this gospel back into your heart saying, look to the strong tower, the Lord Jesus Christ. To hear my cry out, O my soul. I sing praises to him because he is the strong tower that will keep me safe. Isn't that not what Paul and Silas did in prison? They didn't have a pity party when they were locked in chains. No, they sang in the middle of the night. And that led to the Philippine jailer's conversion. They didn't let fear cripple them. They didn't, let, they didn't trust in their feelings. I'm sure they felt fear in the middle of that jail. But they sang worship to the person who can deliver them, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is why we worship, because worship in song is powerful. That is exactly what Jehoshaphat did in one of the battles he faced. He let the priests go first and they sang in front of the army. I mean, how, that doesn't sound a great tactic, does it? But that is showing you that singing worship in song is a spiritual weapon. And it will calm the fears that your soul is fearing. It's saying... It's, it's an act of repentance, really. You're saying, I'm not trusting these fears. I'm going to sing to God. I'm going to, I'm going to worship Him. And in worship Him, you will conquer your fear because in worshiping God in song, you're saying, He is my strong tower. Thirdly, when they sung this song, God, um, David is calling to mind He's remembering God's power of shelter from him in times past. It, this is, a, 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 it is, obviously this is when he was running from a real enemy, but for you have been a, a refuge. And he's reminding himself, look, Saul, remember the times when God was my refuge. And here's another time I need him in another time of trouble. And he delivered me from past enemies. He will deliver me again from this enemy. And so this is how grace operates. It's to remember. 
to remember how the Lord has delivered us. I mean, are we not still Christians? How can that be? Because we're not only saved by grace, we're kept by grace too. And so we're reminding ourselves time after time, the only reason why I'm still a Christian is because I've run to that strong tower again, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this fear that I'm currently experience, experiencing, I'm going to run to that strong tower again because time and time he's proved himself to be true and I'm going to honour his name again. I'm going to hallow this name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he, his name, is the one that I fear. His name is the one I'm going to run to in prayer, in worship, in song, in remembering him. And not only is this is David's experience, but as the, the rest of the congregation are singing of his experience, in, he's saying, look, this is my experience. It can be your experience too. And so that's what, why these Psalms, I'm going to say, well, this is an individual's personal experience and therefore, if this person experienced it, this protection, this safety, we can too. But just as Eve was the mother of all the living, she would one day bear a seed, an offspring. And that offspring was given a name. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says this. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. You see at the cross, Jesus the strong man, Jesus the strongest man that ever walked this planet and had the strongest of all relationships with his father. As he took on our sins, the world and the devil, his greatest fear started to come that am I going to lose the Father's love? And brick by brick, he was feeling like he was being dismantled. He, feel, he felt he was like he was being torn down as wave after wave of God's wrath flooded over his soul as he took the punishment of our sins. But he did that, knowing that one day we can run into him as the strong tower. Because you see, Jesus knew another promise. He knew he knew that he would not be utterly torn down, that his father would not utterly forsake him. Because the Bible, the scriptures promised, my holy one will not see corruption. He took hold of that promise. He said, no matter what my greatest fear on this cross is at the moment, God's word promised, you, my holy one, will not see corruption, that I will see my father's face again. And so that's why the resurrection occurred, because of the promise of God. He knew he would be raised, and one day we will be raised, and we will prove him to be true, that he was the strong tower that delivered us from all our enemies while we walk this planet. And our praise will escalate, and we will honour his name more on that day when we realised he was the one that protected us. He was the one that, that is the strong tower. And so therefore, because we are born again, because we have this, that we are the new man or the new woman, the new creation, and that our life is now hidden with Christ in God, Take heart, Christian. Take heart. Do not fear. Your, your life is hidden. It's behind Christ. And Christ is in God. So you've got a double protection. Therefore, you do not have to fear. So keep running into the strong tower, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we might have the same experience. That he is the one that made us safe. And so therefore we honour his name. For you have been a refuge for me, a strong tower against the enemy. So this is our opportunity to shine. 
to not be like the world who are acting in fear over the, the, the COVID-19. We are to act like those ones who have found a refuge from fear, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we honour his name, the name that is above every name, we will prove to this world the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And so I'm going to leave with a, um, a hymn, Martin Luther's hymn, um, that speaks of this strong tower.